thank you. Thank you everybody for coming out tonight. My name is Gregory Eisenberg, and just a little bit about myself. Uh, I ran for county commissioner in 2016 uh, against this gentleman over here. <laughs> and uh, I also, that's where I, I really came across this issue about these local debates not reaching the everyday voter. And before and after my campaign, and currently I work in digital marketing, and so when I thought of this concept, that's when I introduced it to Natalie. So hello everyone, thank you all for coming. My name is Natalie Martinez. I'm a lifelong Orlando resident. I work in public affairs and I facilitate a nonprofit. And I consider myself someone who's politically engaged. I, I like to think about who I vote for. Um, but, um, you know, via my job and personal interests, um, I thought I knew how I was voting for. And unfortunately, in the past, I'm sure all of us can say we've casted a vote that we regret due to misinformation or just not enough information. In fact, I didn't even vote for Greg. Think about how crazy that is. We talk to each other every single day, and I didn't vote for him. And now she has confidence in me. <laughs> but Natalie's problem isn't unique. This is something that is going on everywhere. And so this is where we wanted to introduce our organization, the Commission on Local Debates. So, so we recently met with the Lou Fry Institute, the civic arm of UCF, and they measure civic engagement levels around the country in each state. And so did you know that Florida ranks below the national average in every measure of civic engagement? <laughs> every single one we are under the national average. That's everything from registered but didn't vote, that's that they just didn't vote, that's they didn't contact their elected official or a town, a town hall ever. We're below the national average in everything. And this is a huge problem for the state of Florida, regardless of your party affiliation. But, and for those over there, I'm sorry you can't see the presentation. <laughs> I just realized. But what if we came together to make a difference? What if Republican, Democrats, non-party affiliates, and third parties, what if we all came together to try to change what's going on right now? And so let's break it down. Let's, let's start talking about the gaps. The first one is there just isn't enough voter education content for voters to make informed decisions out there. Um, so Greg, what about the deployed? What about the disabled? What about um, all the other individuals who really have absolutely no content to base their vote off of? So the next is disengaged constituents that aren't physically attending debates. Why are we still hosting debates that are attended by 20 to 30 people? Why aren't we trying to extend our reach to the people that might have wanted to attend but didn't even have the access or the know-how uh, that the debates even existed? And there just isn't enough civic understanding at, at a large. Um, what does a county commissioner do? What does your state representative um, what are you electing them to go accomplish? There's just not enough understanding of what you're even voting for. Hmm. Oh. That's not good. <laughs> oh. There you go. Mm, there you go. Sorry, y'all. Technical. It's just not. Hmm. What? Is that the next slide? No. No? Okay, well, we've lost some slides, y'all. Sorry. In the meantime, we can continue. Why, why debates? Why are we utilizing debates as our platform? So we believe debates are an excellent uh, balance of entertainment and political discussion in a public setting. Um, debates get people engaged. Everyone think about the 2016 election. Who wasn't watching the presidential debates? Who wasn't tuning in to, to have informed decisions or just be able to talk to your coworkers the next day? Um, we don't necessarily think that local debates will have that much traction, but we do think that there's a similar value of entertainment in them. Um, debates are also an accessible platform for candidates to show their aptitude for office and their policy positions. It's an easy way for somebody to dis use, for a voter to distinguish whether they believe in what they're saying, whether that person is ready to hold office um, or not. And finally, we believe debates can bring the focus back to local issues through appropriate questions. And so, a little bit about our platform. So, we're here to focus on a few things. We're here to focus on voter education, 
and we're here to focus on these debates and using that as a way to engage and educate voters. And so essentially what our platform is planning to be is a place for you to learn what your representative does, who your representative is, watch a debate with your representative in there, and then make an educated vote from there. And so what we plan to do is host these and produce, produce these debates and take the, the visual, the video, the audio, make podcasts, audio solutions online for people to listen to, and the transcriptions, allowing media to be able to actually get the quotes and the statements that were in these debates and host these in one platform so that voters have their engagement, media have their engagement, candidates have an aspect of, of uh, this platform where they have access to all this information to use for promotional purposes, and we make sure that everybody is being reached. So I think we have some slides again, so bear with us. But so, so our goal here is for every constituent to have the chance to see and hear those running to represent them. Um, that they can log in, open up YouTube, open up Facebook, and see the faces and, and the voices and, and the character of those people that are going to go up to either city hall or, ta or county, um, county government or Tallahassee or, of course, um, the U.S. House. To, to see who they are, to actually be able to recognize them on the street and figure out for themselves, regardless of party lines, who they feel more comfortable representing them. Um, so we have two different ways that we're going to be having these debates on our platform. So the two ways we're hosting debates is an in-studio presentation, which is for debates such as your state house, your county or city commissioner, debates that right now aren't reaching people. People are trying to host debates and they're not filling a room, or if they fill a room, it's with people that are already in the loop. And, and part of this is striving to not only reach the 100 people in that room, but the 100,000 that are home that can be reached online. And so in-studio debates allows us to have control over the environment and go ahead and ask these nonpartisan, non community-based questions and get these answers from candidates and be able to post this information in, in an accessible place. Now for those debates that all of us um, might already attend, so we're talking state, senate, US house, county mayor, there are organizations in town that are doing amazing job, of, an amazing job of hosting these large scale debates. And we think that their content would be excellent, an excellent addition to our, to our platform. So we wanna be partnering with those organizations to also add a live version for people to attend. I worked so hard on this PowerPoint. <laughs> I didn't though, so it's okay. <laughs> so we'll go into what makes us different. What is going to make our standards different than what's being done currently? The first thing, the biggest priority is constituency outreach. We want to make sure every debate has a constituency outreach plan and that we focus on voters above anything else. The next is making sure there's open media and fact checking. Right now in debates, a lot of that content is often lost and there is no proof of anything and that always leads to a severe lack of accountability. And so that is something that we're looking to change by making sure that our content is open to the media, to the voters, and to anybody looking to analyze what is being spoken about at these debates. Uh, Nonpartisan selected questions and moderation. We That is one of the pinnacle points of a debate is what are these questions that are being asked? Are they fair? Are they even? Are they attacking somebody personally? And, and are these moderators influencing that or, or losing control on the situation? So we want to make sure that we're having trained moderators, nonpartisan moderators, and nonpartisan selected questions. And that's something that we do have the foot, or we have the placeholders to make sure that it remains nonpartisan. Um, the next is superior audio and video quality for purposes of we want to make sure people can hear and see it. Not just that, but we talked about the 400,000 disabled Floridian voters. People are blind that can't see these things. They should be able to hear these debates. Maybe they're deaf and they can read the subtitles. Maybe they're just busy on the bus. So either way, we want to make sure that they're able to understand and visualize what is going on in these debates in any communication channel they wish. And then the last is leveraging the latest technology. Whether that is using a live feed on Facebook today or in two years when we all have goofy virtual reality helmets, <laughs> yeah. making sure that we're always keeping up with where voters are and how we can reach them. 
and making sure that again, just like I said in the beginning, that that is the top priority. So you might be wondering, this platform can be pretty powerful. It can reach a lot of people. And what if, you know, how, who's to say that it's going to be um, uh, the way that we describe it. So what we are really proud of is the makeup of our nonpartisan board. So if you can see the graphic, our nonpartisan board of community leaders has to be equal parts Republican and Democrat. And then we need at least 10% and an odd number being non-party affiliates or third party. Um, we feel that this is the best way to make sure both parties are represented, but also parties that aren't traditionally represented, which actually make up a um, independent voters make up a huge portion here in Orlando, um, are also there to set the questions. Uh, the president, the vice president, and the at-large member all also have to be from all the three different parties. And so what this board makes sure is that this content that's going to reach so many people or that we, that we aim for it to reach so many people um, can be considered credible by everybody. Oh, and the projected outcomes, we are, I mean, we don't decide, but we're projecting a better informed electorate. That, that's the first thing. We're planning to strengthen local press, providing that content, making sure that these channels that we're accustomed to getting our news from have this content and material in there. And the creation of a trusted voter resource, somewhere that, like I said, people can be informed about who's representing them and make an educated, informed decision on election day and feel empowered to do so. So one of the questions you might be wondering is, how is this funded? Um, so the very first thing is that we are not funded by any government entity, by no candidates, and by no PACs. Um, ultimately, we want our board of directors to be leading our fundraising efforts, but also we want to raise money with grants, personal donation, donations, and debate sponsorships. But uh, to, to do a little joke, uh, this is ultimately sponsored by viewers like you. <laughs> we. Um, we are here um, to hopefully raise some funds for the founding of the Orange County chapter. And all of you being here um, clearly already civically engaged, um, perhaps invested about getting other people civically engaged. And that leads us to where our future growth is. So 2018 is right around the corner. Ugh, I, it just freaks me out every time I say that. <laughs> but 2018 is right around the corner, and that is when we're going to be starting with our inaugural chapter, which will be based in Orange County. Additionally, we're gonna be looking to expand in the Seminole County as well. From there, we're looking to grow county by county and eventually state by state. All of this led in a very hyper-local level by community leaders from that community. And so we're looking to build up these chapter organizations to survive on their own, but to keep the same standards that we've discussed tonight. And that's our goal for 2018 to start off.